And welcome back everyone. It's 39 past the hour. We've been hearing so much about what's been happening in Crimea and Ukraine and Russia. Sometimes here in the Upper Peninsula, it seems so far away and we wonder what's it all about and how does it impact us? Well, joining us this morning is Dr. Mary Durfee, Associate Professor of Government, Social Sciences, Department Advisor for Majors University. All sorts of uh, lauds to you, uh, Dr. Murphy, uh, Durfee. Thank you for joining us this morning. May I call you Mary? Yes, please. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mary, for joining us so early today and helping us sort it out. You know, really, and I know, know the history between Ukraine and Russia is huge. You know, could you tell us a little bit about what's happening, you know, just recently that you're aware of, of what's going on between these two countries? Well, I'll do a, a little on it. Okay. Um, as you know, Khrushchev turned the Ukraine, uh, the Crimea over to the Ukraine way back when. And then when they broke up the Soviet Union, um, the Crimea went with the Ukraine, which was important to the Russians because of the naval base. And uh, the deal in the end was they're semi-autonomous in the Ukraine, and uh, the Russians had permission to have military troops in the base there. Now, obviously, they would rather have it their own. And the threat that they'll go further in both Ukraine and possibly in Transdenistra. That was new that I was hearing about that possibility of Russia now maybe moving into was in Moldova. Am I saying that correctly into that area? Yeah, that's the, the western side of the Ukraine. Okay. Enough. But again, they have there who have troops. Okay, interesting. Now, you know, we've also been hearing a lot about the sanctions that are being leveled against Russia. Um, do you think that these sanctions have a prayer of working at all to make him them back down? Well, as I told my students two weeks ago, I think Crimea is now Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the sanctions are a necessary international statement. You have to not ignore this, of course. And right. so these are fairly low-key sanctions um, that show that we're serious and concerned about it. Now, I, I do understand also that uh, just recently um, they've looked at kicking Russia out of the G8, which is like, to me, sounds like a major deal. Do you know much about that? Can you weigh in on that issue for us a bit? Well, again, I think it's more for symbolic value, mm -hmm. uh, particularly back home um, here in the United States. If we did nothing in the life of this, it would, be, it would be improper. So kicking them out would be a minor insult to the Russians. But I all, I've been thinking recently that this action will further strengthen his, plan, his claims at home that the West is opposed to Russia and that his idea for greater Euro-Asian cooperation realm is good one. Wow. See, and, and when I hear that, I just sort of immediately pops into my mind about the Cold War and how long that was. Do you think that there are some fears of that coming back? Well, to some degree. Okay. But but remember that we never got, when the Russians took over the Baltics, mm -hmm. when they were in alliance at various times, we couldn't do anything there other than affect. And now they're independent and they're members of NATO. Um, so these things can go on for a long while, but I, I don't think it'd be a full scale Cold War, no. Okay. There's enough international trade, enough activities, Europeans are uncertain. I don't think it'll turn into Cold War again. Okay, well that, that'll help set my mind at ease. I think a lot of other people that might be still a little nervous about that situation. So, well, Mary, I wanna thank you so much for joining us this morning, explaining a little bit more. You know, could you give us maybe some final thoughts of what you think about this whole situation and where it's going to go to next? Well, I, I think he will be making pressures on Ukraine, um, the eastern part of Ukraine, and uh, probing where he can. The, the military response I could see happen would be we may need to put a few, just a handful, of American troops in each of the NATO countries that borders Russia. Okay? okay. It's a good deterrent. It, okay. it could be a company. Right. You know? <laughs> Things to do that, and I think we're going to be more serious Russia. We are going to have to figure out how to get more gas to Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, Lithuania specifically requested assistance so they can uh, respond. Of course, Russia can always help us gas to 
China, and I'm not sure the Europeans would be enthusiastic about going too far with that. But that would be more meaningful activity. Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you so much for filling us in. You, you, you know it way better than I will ever learn it. So I do appreciate that you joined us this morning to help us fill it in. It's a pleasure. Anytime. All right. Thank, thank you. All right, and again, joining us uh, via Skype this morning, that was uh, Dr. Mary Durfee from Michigan Tech University. And again, we appreciate her joining us and filling us in a little bit about that. Now it's 44 past and coming up, we're going to be joining Ashley Kirkland, who is out at Lowe's talking about basements.